Being a defender is probably one of the most important roles in cybersecurity. There are plenty of really cool roles like red teaming, hacking and all of that that I'm really interested in. But learning more of the blue team side of things uh, has kind of been something that I've wanted to do for a while. And so in this video and in a series of videos, we'll be walking through the SOC level one learning path from Try Hack Me. Uh, and I'll be going through that and learning with you. So join me as I do this. In this video, we'll be going through the first room, the Junior Security Analyst introduction, which kind of takes us from not really knowing anything about what a security analyst does to a basic understanding of the tools of the trade and <laughs> going through an alert of malicious activity on a network. So let's go, let's do this, let's do this thing. So SOC level one. In the junior security analyst role, you'll be a triage specialist. You'll spend a significant portion of your time triaging or monitoring the event logs and alerts. The responsibilities of a junior security analyst or tier one SOC analyst include the following. Monitor and investigate alerts. Most of the time it's a 24 seven SOC operations environment. Configure and manage security tools develop and implant, implement IDS signatures, escalate the security incidents to the tier two and team leader, team lead if needed. So, <clears throat> since this is my first SOC analyst, SOC level one thing on this path, we'll go to the junior security analyst intro. So this is a play through a day in the, in the life of a junior security analyst the responsibilities and qualifications needed to land a role as an analyst. A career as a junior associate security analyst. In the junior security analyst role, you will be a triage specialist. You will spend a lot of time triaging or monitoring the event logs and alerts. The responsibilities of a junior security analyst or tier one SOC analyst include um, monitor and investigate alerts, configure and manage the security tools, develop and implement basic IDS, intrusion detection system signatures, participate in SOC working groups, meetings, create tickets and escalate the security incidents to the tier two and team lead if needed. Required qualifications most common is zero to two years of experience with security operations basic understanding of networking such as the OSI model um, TCP IP operating systems web applications to learn further about these other things refer to the introductory networking room and the other thing is scripting programming skills are a plus desired certification is the CompTIA Security Plus. As you progress and advance your skills as a junior security analyst, you will eventually move up to tier two and tier three. An overview of the security analyst, uh, security operations center three tier model. So we have the junior tier one, which is triage, the security operations analyst tier two, which is an incident responder, and then threat hunter is tier three. So tier one looks at monitoring the network traffic logs and events, works on the tickets, closes the alert, alerts, performs basic investigations and mitigations. Tier two focuses on deeper investigations, analysis and remediation, proactively hunts for adversaries or adversaries, monitors and resolves more complex alerts. Tier 3 works on more advanced investigations, performs advanced threat hunting and adversary research, malware reversing. So what will be your role as a security junior security analyst? Hmm. Well, that would probably be a triage specialist. So we'll copy that in. It. Whoop, whoop. We got that right. Let's move on to the next section. 
Security Operations Center. So what exactly is a SOC? The core function of a SOC is to investigate, monitor, prevent and respond to threats in the cyber realm 24-7 or around the clock. Per McAfee's, McAfee's definition of a SOC, security operations teams are charged with monitoring and protecting many assets such as intellectual property, personnel, data, business systems and brand integrity. As the implementation component of an organization's overall cybersecurity framework, security operations teams act as the central point of collaboration in coordinated efforts to monitor, assess, and defend against cyber attacks. The number of people working in the SOC can vary depending on the organization's size. So these are the things that are included in the responsibilities of the SOC. We have ticketing, log collection, knowledge base, Research and development, aggregation and correlation, threat intelligence, SEAM, which is security information and event management, and reporting. Preparation and prevention. As a junior security analyst, you should stay informed of the current security threats. Twitter and Feedly can be great resources to keep you up with the news related to cybersecurity. It's crucial to detect and hunt threats work on a security roadmap to protect the organization and be ready for the worst case scenario. Prevention methods include gathering intelligence data on the latest threats, threat actors and their TTPs, tactic techniques and procedures. It, is also, it also includes the maintenance procedures like updating the firewall signatures, patching the vulnerabilities in the existing systems, block listing, blacklisting and safe listing applications, email addresses, and IPs. That was really weirdly worded. It's like blacklisting and whitelisting. To better understand the TTPs, you should look into one of CISA's or Cyber, and Se Cyber Security and Infrastructure Security Agency's alerts on APT40, the Chinese Advanced Persistent Threat. Refer to the following link for information. So... Oh. Let's have a look at that. Tactics, techniques, and procedures of indicted APT 40. So, I think we'll just read the summary. This joint cybersecurity advisory was written by the FBI and CISA to provide information on a Chinese advanced persistent threat group known in open source reporting as APT 40. Uh, this advisory provides ABT40's TTPs and indicators of compromise to help cybersecurity practitioners identify and remediate ABT40 intrusions and establish footholds. So they come by heaps of names, Froren's Mohawk, Fever Dream, and a bunch of other ones. Um, on July 19th, 2021, the Department of Justice unsealed an indictment against four APT40 cyber actors for their illicit computer network exploitation activities via front company, that one. Hainan Zandun, employee Wu Shirong, cooperated with and carried out orders from, the, from PRC Ministry of State security uh, intelligence officers uh, to conduct the computer network exploitation. Wu's computer network activities resulted in the threat of theft of trade secrets, intellectual property and other high value information from companies and organizations in the United States and abroad, as well as from multiple foreign governments. As we can see, we have the tactics here on the left hand side and the activities and techniques so things like reconnaissance and resource development so they gathered victim identity information by completing compromise collecting compromised credentials uh, initial access external remote services so they use VPNs spear phishing emails uh, with malicious attachments and links drive by compromises and exploitation of public facing applications uh, okay, so persistence, the way that they persisted and escalated their privileges and did a bunch of post-exploitation work was using things like Cobalt Strike, Ghost Rat, Green Rat, Jump Kick, 
PowerShell Empire um, and that kind of stuff. So they use a whole bunch of different frameworks and malware to be able to establish persistence and perform post exploitation. Um, defense evasion, how did they evade? So they use steganog steganography to hide stolen data inside other files stored on GitHub. They protocol impersonation by using application programming interface keys for Dropbox account accounts in commands to upload stolen data to make it appear that the activity was legitimate use of Dropbox. Protocol tunneling, the typo squatted for C2 infrastructure um, and then they archive, encrypt and stage collected data locally and remotely for exfiltration. And then they use C2 channels to exfiltrate the data. So that's kind of the tactics, techniques and procedures that they followed. If you want to have a read of this, I would encourage you to do so. Now let's keep going. Monitoring and investigation. A SOC team proactively uses SEAM and EDR tools to monitor suspicious and malicious networked activities. Imagine being a firefighter and having a multi-alarm multi fire. One alarm fires, two alarm fires, three alarm fires. The categories classify the seriousness of the fire, which is a threat in our case. As a security analyst, you will learn how to prioritize the alerts based on their level, low, medium, high, and critical. Of course, it is an easy, it is an easy guess that you will need to start from the highest level, critical, and work towards the bottom, low level alert. Having properly configured security monitoring tools in place will give you the best chance to mitigate the threat. Junior security analysts play a crucial role in the investigation procedure. They perform triaging on the ongoing alerts by exploring and understanding how a certain attack works and preventing bad things from happening if they can. During the investigation, it's important to raise the question how, when and why. Security analysts find the answers by drilling down on the data logs and alerts in combination with using open source tools. Which, we'll, which we will have a chance to explore later in this path. And the final work is res response. After the investigation, the SOC team coordinates and takes action against action on the compromised hosts, which involves isolating the hosts from the network, terminating the malicious processes, deleting files, and more. We've read the above, so we could that complete. A day in the life of junior associate security analyst. This guy is covered in tickets. To understand the job role responsibilities for a junior security analyst, let us show. Let's first show you what a day in the life of a junior security analyst looks like and why this is an exciting career journey. To be in the front line is not always easy and can be very challenging as you will be working with various log sources from different tools that we will walk you through in this path. You will get a chance to monitor the network traffic, including IPS and IDS alerts, suspicious emails, extract the forensic data to analyze and detect the potential attacks, use open source intelligence to help you make the appropriate decisions on alerts. One of the most exciting and rewarding things is when you are finished working on an incident and have managed to remediate the threat. Incident response might take hours, days, or weeks. It all depends on the scale of the attack. Did the attacker manage to exfiltrate the data? How much data does the attacker manage to exfiltrate? Did the attacker attempt to pivot into other hosts? And there are many other questions to answer and a lot of detection, containment, and remediation to do. We will walk you through some of the fundamental knowledge that every junior security analyst needs to know to become a successful network defender. The first thing almost every junior security analyst does on their shift is to look at the tickets to see if there are any alerts, if any alerts got generated. Are you ready to immerse yourself into the role of a junior security analyst for a little bit? I think so. I think so. Let's do this. Let's click on the green button to view site. Let me just make this bigger. Do, do, do. Aha. Okay. Cool. Yeah, here. So, 
Instructions. Inspect the alerts in your SIEM dashboard. Find the malicious IP address from the alerts, take note of it, and then click on the alert to proceed. take down the note. Alright, so what was the malicious IP address in the alert? So that's 221.181.185.159. Alright. To copy that. Submit that there. So it was found to be malicious. There are many open source databases out there like Abuse IPDB, tel, uh, Cisco, Cisco Talos Intelligence, where you can perform a reputation and location check for the IP address. Most security analysts use these tools to aid them with alert investigations. You can also make the internet safer by reporting the malicious IPs, for example, on abuse IPD B. Now that we know uh, the IP address is malicious, we need to escalate. All right. We shouldn't worry too much if it, if it was a failed authentication attempt, but you probably noticed a successful authentication attempt from the malicious IP address. Let's declare a small incident event and escalate it. There is some great staff working at the company, but you wouldn't want to escalate this to the wrong person who is not in charge of your team or department. So, who do we choose? I'd probably go for, so we've got a sales executive, a security consultant, and information security architect and a SOC team lead. I would probably go to the SOC team lead So what's his name? To whom did you escalate the event? So that was to Will. Griffin. Will, Will, Will. Cool. So you got permission to block the malicious IP address and now you can proceed and implement the block rule. Block the malicious IP address on the firewall and find out what message they left you. All right, let's put, oh, that was the wrong. Block that until we meet again. Mr. Hackerman, I don't think so. Boom, baby. And there you have it. The SOC analyst, junior security analyst, intro room. If you found this video helpful, I would really appreciate it if you like and subscribed um, and share this with a friend. Until next time, have a good week. If you enjoyed this video, well, thanks for watching and I hope that you join me for the next one where we'll be going through the next room. Thank you. Bye.